eating a lot of protein could be killing your bulk. All right, let's talk about bulking and a lot of protein. Just refuse to say gains. I know. <laughs> well, you know why? It's specifically about it's specific about bulking because <laughs> you, you know it's funny. So I got uh, what did I do? This? Kill your was, gains too? No. It, in bulking, yeah. I was <laughs> <laughs> no. So here's here's why I was talking to somebody the other day. I think it was on a oh no. Here's what it was. I was on um, the NCI group last night with the the trainers and coaches. <laughs> And there was a young lady on there that was talking about having a client that was a hard gainer. It was a female client, really skinny, who feels really full eating anything over 1,200 calories. Yeah. And she's like, what do I do? It's going to be re it's really hard for her to eat more than 1,200 calories. She's super full and she's got a super fast uh, or based on her appetite, her metabolism is faster than what she's eating. We can't gain her, get her to gain any muscle. And I said, well, how much, what's her protein intake like? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, we're, we're aiming for a gram of protein per pound of body weight. And I said, that might be the problem. Yeah, she's eating all protein pretty and much. And from now. natural <laughs> sources too. Yeah. yeah. And so here's the issue with bulking is that, yes, a high protein diet does help with muscle gains. It's also the most satiating macronutrient. Protein will kill your appetite faster than carbs or, or, or fats, much faster. So if you're eating a high calorie diet and you're, you have a fast metabolism, you're trying to put on size – and you're eating a lot of protein can make it very, very challenging. Now, the interesting thing is studies show that high protein or really high protein is more important on a cut than it is on a bulk, right? So when you're bulking, as long as you're eating like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight and your calories are above surplus, you're doing fine. It's when you're cutting that you want the higher protein because it preserves muscle and it, of course, helps with appetite. But I remember this with myself as a kid trying to eat more mm -hmm. food if I ate too much protein, it would kill my appetite. I'd get, I couldn't oh, eat It becomes anymore. a chore really fast. <clears throat> and that's where it, I think supplement companies, you know, uh, really like peered into that and tried to make it so you'd get as many calories as possible and make it, um, you, you know, try, try to make it a, a palatable so you could consume like, uh, you know, 1,100 calories in one sitting. Uh, but man, you'd pay the price uh, as you're digesting it. Well, I really think there's, there's a fine line here because- I also went through the phase where I was eating plenty of calories, but I wasn't getting in a bulk. Yeah, but I wasn't getting enough protein. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so there, you're right. There's, I'm, I'm not saying low protein. <clears throat> right, right. So it, it is like this, and I, it, that's why it, it's not that simple, right? Like I think sometimes uh, the fitness space oversimplifies it. Like, oh, you just got to get your protein, and and I remember when we first started the podcast, we would go back and forth on this because it's like I'm really careful about that message because I know that a majority of my clients didn't get enough protein. Mm -hmm. But then if I'm talking to a, a hardcore fitness person who knows protein is like this, you know, magical macronutrient that helps you build muscle, they overconsume. And sometimes they overconsume so much that it fucks digestion and then they have a hard time bulking or putting on muscle. So yeah. there really is like this sweet spot that you want to be at. And I, I feel like a lot of people tend to be on the extremes. Either they don't, they they grossly under eat it, so that's mm -hmm. why they're not building any muscle, or they eat so much of it, chasing it, thinking that it's the the magical macronutrient, and then their digestion is kind of fucked up, and then they can't, or they just have, their appetite just doesn't allow them, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Like like because they're the, so satiated. Yeah, and the example of this young woman that we were talking about, I think she was, I think she said she was like 109 pounds, and I said, you know, if she eats 75 grams of protein, that would be plenty for her body weight, and mm. then she could eat the rest of the calories in more palatable carbohydrates and fats because mm -hmm. those don't hammer your your appetite nearly as much. I mean, this is even for the case with me. When I'm trying to gain, you know, I weigh right now, I'm, I'm maybe closer to 215. 215 grams of protein for me, if it's from food in particular, because yeah. I can add shakes and shakes don't do this as much. But if I eat 215 grams of protein and food, my appetite is is shot. Yeah. Now, it is really hard. Yeah. So I, I know we've given the advice in terms of like uh, trying to cut down where we start with protein. Would you reverse that in this situation where you're trying to like go carbs, you know, and then fat and then protein oh, in terms thought. of like the order of it? Yeah. I, it depends on the person. If, if it's a, one of those situations <clears throat> where you're, and you know what, I think it's important to paint the context that I'm talking about people who are challenged with eating enough calories to be in a surplus. Yeah, that's who we're talking about. Right yeah, now. so if it's easy, if you're if a surplus is easy for you, then maybe don't, this is not that big of a deal. But if you're somebody who's like, man, I can't eat enough, and it's really hard for me to eat all the calories that I, I need to in order to gain any additional muscle, um, in that particular case, I would say, okay, so long as we're getting, you know, about, like I said, 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, 
After that, go for the more easily digestible, palatable macronutrients, carbohydrates, and even fats, right? Fats and carbohydrates, especially when you combine them with, with you know, salt or a little bit of sweetness, are very palatable. Protein is just, it's an, and we know it's for fact, it's a fact. It will bring down your appetite. I mean, you eat a bunch of chicken, <clears throat> Uh, especially lean chicken or lean protein, and you're just like, I, I can't eat anymore. Well, anymore. I also think this is, here's an example, right, of where, and something that we don't advocate for, but where it sometimes makes sense is eating <laughs> processed foods and foods that are super palatable. More palatable. Yeah, just because it's, I mean, I did that when I was yeah. trying to hit my cal when my calories had to be like 4,000 plus, it was just, it That's was hard, man. Yeah, it was impossible to do it with all whole foods. Yeah. I mean, maybe I could do yeah, that once in a while, but consistently <clears throat> to maintain that, that muscle mass that I mean I had to pile on but the thing that I did was I, I just I made it a rule that okay I'm gonna get like all of my my protein intake that I need through whole foods and natural sources and then I'll pile the calories on after that like so it was like okay I still was eating yeah. a, a bulk of my nutrition was coming from clean quote-unquote foods and then it was like, okay, I just had this dinner, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be really tough for me to have another, like, and I, and I hit, let's say I hit all my protein, what I need to, as far as hitting my protein targets, but I'm like short a thousand calories. Be really hard for me to have a, a double or a triple serving of the dinner I just had, mm -hmm. but I definitely could sit down and have some ice cream. Yeah. Or I could definitely get had sit down and have like magic spoon cereal. I could definitely do something that was super palatable like that or processed that would help me do it. And I know we don't for health, it's not the ideal thing for you to do. But for someone who's really struggling with putting weight on or bulking, that was a strategy that I found I had to do in order to break through that, yeah. that struggle. I yeah, had. for me, it's mm -hmm. like, um, <clears throat> you know, all as long as I hit um, right now 150 to 170 grams of protein through food, uh, then I'll eat the rest in more palatable, you know, macros. I'll, you know, like I'll have you know potatoes and I'll even fry the potatoes sometimes. White rice is good, but I'll add butter to the rice, which makes it more palatable and salt. Um, and then at the end of the day, for me, it's easier to add a shake for the protein. Because if I have a lot of protein from whole natural foods, my appetite's it's done. I just can't eat anymore. It totally so that, that's me. what I'll do if I'm still chasing protein. But what would happen sometimes is, you know, when I was, again, back to the 4,000, yeah. 5,000 calorie days, I'd hit my 220 grams of protein, you know, at like, say, 3,000 calorie mark. But then I knew I needed another thousand calories. Now you're throwing the other uh, stuff yeah. on. Yeah, that's where I would slap on the ice cream or do yeah. something like that to keep my calories. You know, I remember high. I had a client just like this, and it was somebody who, and it was a woman who just, I don't know if you guys, and this is not super common, right? It's nine out of 10 times, it's the opposite. It's somebody who has an issue with eating too much. But every once in a while, you get a challenge where you have somebody who's, and they're, they're being very sincere. It's like, I just don't, I can't eat anymore. Like, I feel like I'm stuffed and, and, I, you know, I'm just not hungry. And I remember I had a client like this and I kept pushing the protein and she's like, Sal, after I eat, you know, the chicken breasts and stuff that you tell me, I can't eat anymore. And then I said, you know, let's try cutting your protein down a little bit and seeing if we can get more calories by doing that. And it totally worked. Mm -hmm. She was able to eat more food as a result and then gain, you know, uh, some muscle. And, and again, the studies show this, that the upper limit for most people for gains from protein is around... 0 0.6, 0 0.7 grams per pound of body weight if you're relatively lean. More than that, and you really don't get any additional uh, benefit. Now, the additional benefit you may get from eating more than that is really good when you're cutting because there seems to be a muscle-preserving effect when your calories are low, and also the appetite-suppressant effect that you get from protein. That's really handy yeah. when you're trying to cut. But when you're doing the other side of that, oh, that can make it really and what's, hard. And what's the the theory or the the, the science behind that? Is that be, when you're low calorie, I mean, the, your calories what is what gets converted over into sugar and energy and fuel. Yeah. Because you're low calorie, you have minimal amount of that. So then the body starts looking for other resources. I'm assuming that's why a higher protein diet in a in a calorie deficit is more advantageous than a higher uh, higher protein diet in a bulk. Yeah, you know, I'm going to say this very carefully because. I know. Context I mean, matters. You're going to get somebody who's going to get all. But yeah. I mean, for the general population to get an understanding, like yeah. that's kind of how I would try and explain Yeah. It. And, and really, protein, <clears throat> and again, I'm going to be careful with this because context uh, matters quite a bit. And it's not as cut and dry as it's going to sound right now. But protein has an anabolic effect. High protein has a pro muscle building effect. So it's like you're sending a build muscle <clears throat> signal while you're also cutting calories. And cutting calories generally is a get rid of 
uh, muscle signal. Catabolic. It's catabolic, yeah. right? Because yeah. your body's always trying to balance the energy. And a great way for it to do it is reduce muscle because muscle is expensive. It burns a lot of calories. So eating high protein in that particular state tends to preserve more muscle. Now, the reason why I'm careful with this is because people will hear this and be like, oh, cool, the more protein, the better, and I'm going to build more muscle if I just eat a ton of protein. It's not that simple. But yeah, when you're cutting, you have a muscle-preserving effect when you do that. And when you're in a bulk, you don't need as many grams of protein to build muscle. It's just because you're already in a surplus, it's not nearly as important. High protein is important, just... You know, the super high protein intake doesn't really make that big well, of a difference. Well, just simply being in a calorie surplus, that and we now switch from being, you know, you're in a deficit, you're in a catabolic state. When yeah. you're in a surplus, you're in an anabolic yes. state. So just simply being in a surplus, you're already pro building or pro adding, right? Totally. And so uh, it makes sense, right? And when you're low like that, your body's looking for other resources for fuel. And yeah, so it it's interesting help. to me too, but just even in, on the training side <clears> of it, like how people don't really. Um, attribute or, or think about the muscle preserving uh, strategies in terms of like when you're on a cut, like the, all they want to do is like cut down. And so they're trying to like reduce calories and then get high intensity, you know, movement, almost cardiovascular based type of uh, exercises uh, instead of like focusing more on actual, uh, you know, strength training uh, to, to, to provide that signal that, you know, we still need the muscle. Oh, there. dude, the, the key to the key, the key to cutting a hundred percent is muscle preservation. That's the key. Focus all your energy on muscle preservation while you're in a deficit, and you are more likely to end up leaner. Uh, you know, from a body fat perspective. But do you guys see that message very often in this space? No, I me- don't. Like the, ever. No, the message is very much like the scale: how yeah. much weight you lost, how much size you lost, are you smaller, that type of deal. Muscle preservation is the most important thing whenever you're trying to get lean, right. because what you don't want to do is you don't want, to, especially this. Uh, you, That's all your work you're losing. Right? Yeah, and regardless, if you're, uh, I don't care if your goal is to look sculpted or not, you don't want to end up at the end of a weight loss journey with a significantly slower metabolism. Good luck maintaining that, right? So you're eating 2,500 calories a day and you're overweight. You lost 30 pounds, now you're eating 1,200 calories a day and that's what you got to eat to maintain. That's a big difference and that's forever. Mm-hmm. That's a tough position to be in. That's usually why we see- You know, <clears throat> you know what was down. really tough for me and I don't think I've shared this on the show before was after using all those strategies to, to push calories for as long as I did during the competitive years, was now that I'm like my metabolism is so different than yeah. what it was then is breaking uh, behaviors, eating oh. behaviors. Like I had to train, I train an, an example of what, that's, a, that's a tough one. Like an example of an extreme one, right? I, I, I got to a point where for at least four or five years there that if I ordered like a five guys, it was always two double, double burgers and whatever else on the side. Right. And you know, when I'm slamming four or 5,000 calories, you know, that's only like 1,600 calories. It's just a fraction of my my day or yeah. whatever. It's that. actually helping you hit your target. Yeah, and it, it, would, it would be high protein, and so I would I would need it for the day. Where, and because I got so used to doing that, that if, you know, and now like, oh, Katrina and I, we just ordered five guys the other day, and, you know, it's the my natural thing is to order two of those. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I'm like more like 3,000 calories a day right now, but, you know, for the longest time, I would still do that. I would still go back and still order that and then way over consume, but think I need to eat that much. It took me a while to get out of that, that mindset of, I don't need that much anymore. And just one of those will satisfy me. It'll yeah. give me my caloric intake I need, but I trained myself so hard on always pushing the calories for such a consistent period period of time that you you get these habits of you know certain dishes that you eat or like that and the the serving size that you would do it in totally and the the reverse is true right yeah like uh right now right i've I've been trying to bulk it's been really hard now my metabolism's way faster than it's been in a long time especially ever since starting uh trt so i've gained some muscle metabolism's really fast my gut health has always been the limiting factor or should i say for the last maybe eight to ten years it's been a limiting factor and there's been some stuff that I've done uh, over the last year or so. My gut health seems to be really good. So I'm pushing calories, and it's really weird and really hard because my eating habits were the way they were yeah. for so long, where you know I, I didn't eat all the time. I didn't have to worry about eating all the time. That's just my, It was better for my gut health, and that's what it was, my yeah. metabolism. Now it's like, holy cow, man. I got really, My goal was, let's see if I can go from 210 to you know 220 or so, gain 10 pounds. And I'm sitting at 215 right now, and there's no way. There's no way I'm going to be able to. No way. I don't want to. It's way too much food. You know what happened last? You know what's been happening? I'm snoring now. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm snoring at night now. Yeah, yeah. On my side. I'll yeah. sleep on my side. <clears throat> Last night I wake up in the middle of the night. My wife's not in bed. I'm like, where'd she go? She went in my daughter's room to go to well, sleep. Well, remember, we, I was snoring we, we used to get shit all the time on the podcast because you would hear me me breathing back in the early yeah. days when we first started the podcast. Like that was like yeah. one of the, the we get criticized for that all the time because I'd be. Like, I remember when we had was it who do we have here? Jordan Shallow. Oh, Shallow. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a, it's a, I roll him under the bus. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a heavy breather. Shallow yeah. is like that. You're just sitting. Just he's sitting a big there. guy though. <sighs> yeah, I feel like everybody has a different threshold too. Like I don't think my body is like getting over two ten for me is really hard. Right. Some some. Some people over 210, no problem. And they feel comfortable. For me, I'm like forcing that my body, I don't think it's that good. Oh, uh, watching, I mean, watching you right now t- so reminds me of, you know, show years, like because the, wa- the way you have to eat to just to maintain your size right now. It's silly. It's a like an, it's like having a whole nother job on top of the. It's expensive. It's silly. It takes up a lot of time. Yeah. And it you looks know, cool though. It's fun <laughs> for a second, dude. I, it's, yeah, but you never show it off. So, yeah. uh, come on, guy. I had a, no. I got. A, a I don't want you use that for marketing reasons. So I you had, make some money, man. Dude, I had a pump yeah. today that was. I, I, I have fans what they want. This hasn't happened to me in years. <laughs> give, give the fans what they Shut want, your dude. Face. <laughs> Stupid. No, listen. You I had start a, a hashtag. I, yeah, I yeah. had a pump today where I, I wash my clothes on you. I, I couldn't change my shirt. Remember that? I haven't that in years. Yeah, where yeah. you get such a pump yeah, that yeah. you're like trying to do your shirt and you can't do it. But you know what I've been doing that's helped a lot is at the end of the day, I add protein if I need it. Yeah. Um, and the only one that I can do that doesn't really make me feel like, oh my God, I, I'm so stuffed is the bone broth the protein. The bone broth one. Yeah, from paleo. Mm-hmm. I can throw, I can have, you know, 60 gram serving of protein with that and it's like water. It's, it's super smooth. Easy. Yeah. It's just because there's nothing in it. It's just, there's Courtney no flavor, the there's time. no color. Oh, so it's, you use it too. So I, yeah. I haven't used it. I'm so terrible, right? But no. I mean, yeah, I haven't tried you, but I know you both get a little more upset with the way. Although I, I do notice things when I've had, I've told you before, yeah. I had multiple things a day of whey, but I haven't been, I haven't messed with that yet. Dude, you I could, it's like water. It doesn't taste like a no, protein no, no, bone? you, no, no, no. You taste it. Okay. There, yeah. You taste like bone broth. There's oh, no okay. bone broth. There's no smooth. flavor. Yeah. There's no nothing in it. It's literally just. Have you thought? Is, have you thought of making it like in like a soup or a stew or something like that? You would just you like, can it's like something yeah. you would use like a normal. We broth. tried that with like a, a chicken soup. Oh, you broth. guys. So yeah, I'm wondering yeah. if you if you tried. Something I haven't. Like, I just you know it was mix all it. right. It, yeah, it wasn't was bad. it good? Yeah. No, I just mix it with water. But I could have a, a, literally a 60 gram shake, drink it, and 10 minutes later, it's like I drink water. Wow. Versus if I do other proteins. 40 grams is where I'm at. If I go like 60, it doesn't matter what the well, source don't is. You, do you pour it in your uh, rice, right? Like, oh, if I do, do that, if I like do, yeah, if I make it into, kind of thing. if I make it into hot, you know, uh-huh. like broth, yeah, then you can use that instead of I've done water. that before, but not with the Paleo Valley protein powder. I did that back when we were working with uh, Kettle and Fire. Yeah, 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 that yeah. would make the, the protein rice that you talk yeah. about. That I really liked. Yeah. I thought it actually tasted yeah. really good. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.